It's been an outstanding success. I think the feedback from the delegates, from the panellists, from the contributors, it's been a really worthwhile event and a great opportunity to bring lots of people from different places together to talk about the importance of ageing in Scotland. It's a culmination of um, conversations that we've had over the past few months about how we can change the narrative. It comes in the back of the Scottish Government's um, older people strategy about how older people give you know, so, so much wisdom and lived experience and all of their, 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 their life can be used in a way that should be in a positive way. You're not over the hill when you're 50, you know, you're just starting a new stage of your life and that stage should be the best stage. All businesses and organisations need to recognise what older people can bring and with the shortage of skills and knowledge it actually makes sense for getting them to work a wee bit longer and contribute a bit longer, whether it's full time or part time, but too often we've sort of said people get to a certain age and they're of no value any longer to the economy. Well, actually, as we're hearing today, they are. The university's approach to ageing is one of an asset-based model um, rather than a deficit model. Um, and we hear so much in the media of what a burden older people are. Um, here at the university, we want to change that narrative and turn it into a very positive narrative. I think it's been a fantastic event. I came with a pretty open mind, so I didn't know what to expect, but I've been really impressed some of the thought-provoking presentations in terms of life experience, the entrepreneurs, the approach to physical fitness, it's been very broad and it's just prompted lots of other little action points I want to try and take away and, uh, and implement. There's a lot of really good interesting information coming out. I like some of the information around technology and what is, com you know, what is coming from abroad as well and it's a starting point in changing culture and our views towards ageing. I find it a really exciting day, full of content. I think it's a conversation we absolutely need to have. There was a meeting of minds and I think we're all keen to see that this is just the beginning, but there will be next steps and new policies that evolve to address the issue. There's lots of things that we can do from here, so at the end when I did the q and I said to people, we need to hear from you, because the work that we do in government has to be informed by your experience and the things that you need and want, so that when government does that work, it reflects what people actually want and need. That makes it much, much more successful in a policy-making process. But what does that policy mean? It means changing things for people, using their contributions, changing the narrative to maybe ikigai where you have that real balance, that Japanese outlook, the older people are more respected, but their contribution is really valued. I think definitely we would look to repeat this next year. I think it also identified a whole range of dialogues and conversations that I think we need to have over the coming months, whether it be on human rights or rights-based approaches, whether it be on language, whether it, whether it be about unlocking the research and the knowledge that exists within the university. I think there's huge opportunities. I think today we just need to reflect, we need to enjoy the moment and we need to take that energy and move forward in a positive way.